So today we are going to talk about how, when a guitar pedal is engaged, reasons why they may pop, and what steps we can do to resolve this problem. We are not really going to go over the mechanical click of the switch, but rather the electrical popping one might hear through their amplifier. So, here are five reasons your pedal may be popping and how to fix it. Reason number one, voltage leak. This is caused by the input and output of your pedal having a small built up voltage. Typically on pedals, we have an input and output capacitor to decouple or block DC voltages from doing this. However, capacitors are not perfect and have a property called voltage leakage, where some of that DC voltage does make it through to the other side of the capacitor, giving us that small built up voltage at the input and or output of your pedal. With the pedal bypassed, these voltages hang out at the ends of our circuit, and when we engage the pedal, these voltages have a place to go. The input side reacts as a small signal pop, which the pedal will process as if it was your actual guitar signal. The output side will also react as a small signal pop, which will then go into the next pedal or out to your amplifier as if it were your actual guitar signal. If you have the pedal disengaged, you can measure the input and output lines with a voltmeter and see if there are any voltages lingering at the ends. What you're looking for is if you're getting tens or hundreds of millivolts at the ends of your circuit. To resolve this, typically people install anti-pop or bleeder resistors at either end of their pedal that takes those lines to ground, allowing this built up voltage a place to bleed away to. However, this can only remove so much leaked voltage and there may be too much for the bleeder resistors to move quickly. In this case, you may want to install better quality capacitors as cheaper ones typically have higher leakage values. Reason number two, LED current draw. As most pedals use LEDs as indicators to know if the pedal is on or off, we will need to prepare for the immediate current rush the LED will draw when turning on. This rush will cause the voltage to immediately drop till the LED is lit, and then spike once the LED is full. This only takes milliseconds or even microseconds to happen, but when it does, it can lead to the pedal making an audible pop. This typically happens if your power supply feeding all your pedals doesn't have enough bulk capacitance to feed your pedal and your LED. Though there are several ways you can fix this issue, and I'll have some circuit examples with links in the description below, they typically come back to the idea of making the LED draw the least amount of current possible so that the incoming current rush is very little. A simple method is to use bright LEDs, but then install a large current limiting resistor like a 4.7K or even a 10K, to reduce the brightness to normal levels. If the LED is naturally bright, using a high value current limiting resistor will still allow it to shine, but use less current when doing so. Remember, this LED only needs to be bright enough to see in a dimly lit venue, not in direct sunlight. Reason number three, microphonic capacitors. Though other components can be microphonic, this is typically an issue related to the use of ceramic capacitors on your guitar pedal. Dave Jones from the EEV blog made a video about this a while ago. Let's hear his explanation. Now one weird thing about class 2 ceramic capacitors, because, of their, because they're ceramic and they're multi-layer construction, they are, absent, they are actually what's called uh, microphonic. Uh, due to the piezoelectric effect, any sound or vibration, in either directly into the cap or via the board, can actually flex it and it can generate a voltage, just like a microphone. These things will actually pick up and uh, translate sound. So when stomping on a pedal, especially one with a mechanical stomp switch, this action will be enough to shake or vibrate the capacitor, causing a pop or thud. For smaller valued capacitors, like anything under one nanofarad, the signal may be too small to hear, but ceramic capacitors larger than this may be a problem. You can test to see if this is an issue by tapping a plastic pen or any other solid non-conductive item on parts of the PCB while engaged and hear if it makes any noise. To fix an issue like this, simply use other capacitor types like film, tantalum, or electrolytics. If you have to use ceramic, look for ones labeled soft termination or whose dielectric is C0G NP0 as they will reduce this issue drastically. Reason number four, switch bounce. When a stomp switch is pressed, it doesn't make a single clean instant contact as you may think. As a switch piece collides with the contact, it physically rebounds off of it, 
sometimes several times over, until it comes to a rest. And all this happens in a period of just hundreds of microseconds. All switches do this, and this includes relays too. As you can see here from this digital capture from an oscilloscope, this example of a switch button was, at first, not providing power. Then the switch was pressed, and for a brief moment you can see the power was delivered, then it turned off, then on, then off, then on, and off, then on and off. This can sometimes be interpreted as noise on the circuit, causing a pop. The easiest way to eliminate this issue is to use better quality switches and relays with faster bounce times. Otherwise, the only other option is to add a muting circuit to your pedal. Its job would be to ground out the input and output lines of your pedal for a short period of time, specifically right before and after the noisy switch is actuated. Reason number five, boost pedals. If you have a boost pedal, you typically use it to take a quiet signal and boost it to make it loud. If the difference in the signal levels from quiet to loud is large enough, however, and this occurs in a very short period of time, it can be heard as a pop. To test this, if you mute your guitar and then engage the boost pedal and it doesn't pop, but with the boost disabled and you begin to strum and as you strum you engage the boost pedal and it does pop, then this may be the issue. In this case, there really isn't much you can do, aside from muting before you switch the pedal on as mentioned a moment ago. This is a case where buffered bypass circuits that use JFETs for switching, like in the ones in boss pedals, really shine. Because of their slow switching speeds, due to the JFETs inside, it essentially fades the audio in and out, never allowing for a sharp difference in signals, but rather a gradual one. So I hope this helps give you some ideas as to why your pedal is popping, and what you can do to try to resolve it. There are other reasons that can cause pops as well, but these are the five most common ones typically seen. Well, anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kinds of videos, press that like button, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe. Also, if you would like to support the channel, please visit our site, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and check out our PCB projects and parts, as that would really help us out. And don't be afraid to leave comments below for us. Once again, thanks for watching. Cheers.